Well, how do there, chums? Design Captain from the Steve's, and today, chums, for you guys in the view of us, I've got some news for you that could be considered as being spoiler esque. So, yes, this is from Data Mind Files, and it's been sent over to me by Kurt. Kurt, who is the maker of the No Man's Sky Assistant app. Links for the No Man's Sky Assistant app will be in the video description. But I'm going to be jumping over to my news desk any second now, and I'm going to be showing you what he sent over to me so a lot of this is to do with the expedition the crucible expedition and also quicksilver items that could be coming into the quicksilver store so yeah you've been warned i'm jumping over to my news desk now people Chicka -pow -pow! and there i am at my lovely news desk this is my gag news desk i guess it is and i need to bring on up the screen to show you what he sent me over on the old google drive so there we go people you should be able to see that on the screen now hopefully it's big enough for you now i'm just gonna take a little quick sip of my tea and what folder shall we go to first let's go into the old quicksilver shops shall we Right, so you can see here, quite a lot of these still need icons. And so, I know that we've had the red apple. I don't know whether the green apple is going to bring us more stuff into the verse. But it could be that there's a second part to this update. Maybe Sean might tweet out a green cowboy in the coming days. Who freaking knows, people? Anyway, let's scroll on down. And we've got this. So, this is a special jetpack. Corrupted jetpack. In fact, if I scroll all the way down, if I scroll all the way down here, you can see all those. But you can see them with the lovely green and turquoise type backgrounds. So, we've got that one, which looks like some sort of corrupted jetpack trails. We've got a new fandangly poster. I like this new fandangly poster. Look at that. It looks like blueprints. For building your own droid. That looked great on a freaking t-shirt, mate, wouldn't it? That freaking would. That would be pretty darn sweet. Anyway, let's click back. Depending on how advanced these robots are after we've built them. And we've got this here. Which is like a little corrupted sentinel. Almost looks like an Apache sentinel, doesn't it? Pretty darn sweet. And then we've got this one here, which is another poster. So we've got quite a lot of posters coming in, people. A lot of posters, which is pretty cool. And this one here. Lovely jubbly. Cool. And I think you can see that banner without me having to double click it, but I will anyway. There you go, make it a little bit bigger. That looks quite nice as a traveller banner, doesn't it? And then I think we're getting some base parts in the way of these purple crystals, which could be quite cool. Especially, you know, those kaleidoscopy type things that people like making, like big round things. It could look quite cool in one of them things. I mean, look at that. That's pretty darn sweet as well. And then there's one other that's got a sentinel sort of grafted into it. Pretty sweet. So a few base parts, a few decals, a few posters. Yeah, all good. Very nice. And a jetpack trail there, people. Okay, right. Well, let's click back from there. Now, if I go into... So that was Quicksilver Store. If we go into products, into here... Now, this looks like we might be able to build our own sentinelized robot, doesn't it? That looks pretty darn sweet. I might download all of these and put them into um, the old face, oh, the Photoshop, mangle them together and see what this robot looks like when it's built, people. I might do that in a moment, so yeah, don't go away. I haven't done it yet, so I'm going to have to edit this video if I do. Right, so click back from there. And we're going into patches. So the patches, these are what you get given as you go through the whole um, expedition -y type thing. They pop up on the screen as and when you do your phases. And there's quite a lot here. So it looks like we will be going to some sort of relic site, leaving a planet. And then I'd imagine these are all for building your robot in different phases. Or these could be um, the rendezvous points. So rendezvous one, two, three, four five different rendezvous points perhaps maybe and then this looks like it's you head into a robot system so maybe a corrupted system a dissonant system and getting your first party robot i imagine but then you've got all these powery bits here as well that also look like building out your robot the body the head the legs the arms hands or whatever and then this looks like the soul it actually says soul up there so you're gonna be putting a soul inside of your actual uh, little robot companion -y friend i don't know whether he is a companion I don't know. I'm wondering whether this might just be more of a text adventure. I don't think we're going to get our own robot companion at the end of it that's going to do something or whatever. But that would be quite cool, wouldn't it? it looks like we're going to be speaking to Nada. Speaking to Nada. Oh, and then we've got these milestone patches. These look more like rendezvous badges. So Fudge knows what these are over here. They must just tie into the actual build. Who freaking knows? These look more like the rendezvous patches of yesteryear. They're kind of washed out though, aren't they? Very odd. Very odd indeed. But yeah, there's quite a freaking lot of them, to be honest. 
Okay, so where's the one with one star on it? There it is. One star, two star, three star, four star. How many is there? Five. Just four. Four there. Four there. Three, two, and one. Isn't it weird how you've got one that's sort of like illuminated and then one that's greyed out? I don't think that's been the case before. Curious. Very curious. What do you think that might mean inside of the Viewerverse? Are there two different distinct realms in this? And it, the actual name is... Oh, hold on. Patch Milestone Corrupt Dot One Grey. And then this one is just Corrupt One. I don't know. Maybe it's just that they're greyed out, but then... That's weird. That's weird. Okay, we've also got Patch Library Building, so it looks like we're going to be visiting a Colossal Archive. And we've got Corrupted Sentinels. Where are you going to inter interact with them or destroy them? Not too sure. But it looks like some of the build elements for your robots, you need some of the bits from destroying some of these Corrupted Sentinels. So I'd imagine we're going to be doing a bit of combat. Another one for getting like, these crystals off the planet. That seems to be the Expedition Badge, which is Crucible, by the way. The name of the Expedition is going to be Crucible. And when you look up the meaning for Crucible, it means to mix something inside of a smelting pot to make something new, something different. So, yeah, pretty darn cool. Like a forge in a roundabout way. And we're going to be forging something inside of this robotic suit by putting its soul in there. So I think Crucible is quite a fitting name. Pretty darn sweet. And we've got all these patches here that say about Atlas stations. So I think it, as we jump in through these rendezvous points, I, I'd imagine we're going to be also visiting Atlas stations, which is kind of cool. And also the ingredients for building this droid, we're going to be needing certain Atlas seeds in construction of said on part for the actual um, droid. So hopefully there's going to be some lore. I'm half expecting lore to be around maybe when you talk to Nada, because there's a Nada badge. And Nada's probably going to tell you to go to the Atlas, even though they're kind of trying to avoid the Atlas, which is weird. And hopefully, maybe, then we might get some lore from the Atlas, perhaps, in why we're building this Sentinel droid. So I think this could be quite an interesting expedition for lore buffs and those interested in Sentinel origins, maybe the Realm of Glass, perhaps what's going on with this whole Void Mother stuff. I'm hoping we're going to see quite a lot in there. Now, there are a load of other patches in here. Well, not patches, icons, but they're all for Mac iOS. And there's some curious ones in here that actually show a control, like this one, ship landing or whatever. I mean, that doesn't look like a ship, Rick. Oh, no, no. There we go. It says iOS ship weapon PNG. But that looks like a joypad or some sort of control stick, like a move controller. So I'm wondering whether there's another announcement to come that we might be seeing this come to the Nintendo... Uh, not the uh, Apple Mac iOS glasses, if the, if the VR glasses become a thing. Because there's a lot of curious ones in here, which is pretty interesting, isn't it? But there you go. Loads and loads of icons for the old Apple Mac. Yeah, pretty darn cool. I mean, what the fudge is that? Accelerate. Yeah, because look, that's, that almost looks like a, a joypad, like face on or something. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I don't think we've heard everything that we need to hear from the old Apple Mac. I really don't. I'll jump on over to the actual patch notes in a moment for the Apple Mac version, but it really is just, it's coming to Apple Mac. Right, effects here. So there's additional effects that are going to be coming in. So different jetpack trail type effects. And I think they're just to improve what we're getting in there anyway. Jetpack fire trail as well there. And there's magic ball, but I can't really see what that is. It's white on white. But yeah. They, they look like they're just sort of shaders to me. I don't think they're anything too special. And then we've got this in here, which is a banner wide icon. If I double click it, it's very oddly staged. It's sort of like offset. So a bit strange. But yeah, that's a lovely banner. Sweet. Okay, there is also some language keys. But it's, it seems to be, when I'm reading this, it's more about sort of how things are, are rendered in. There's left hand, right hand stuff. There's all sorts of bits about anti-aliasing and uh, making pixels smaller. There is a little bit of flavour text up here, but I don't think it's it's much to really give you too much of an idea of what's going on. So, yeah, 
Uh, that's that's pretty much everything that's been sent over to me by Kurt, the maker of the No Man's Sky Assistant app. So, you know what, I'm going to jump over into the old um, Photoshop and I'm going to be putting those bits and bobs together and seeing if I can bring you an image of that droid once it's all assembled. And then I'll be jumping over to the No Man's Sky website and we're going to be looking at the patch notes for the Apple Mac version of this and then also I've got two videos that I want to do a little bit of analysis deep dive into because both of them show the Apple Mac version of um, No Man's Sky. One shows it to be pretty much unworkable and the other one shows that it's buttery smooth. So yeah I'm going to be showing you those. Anyway people I'll be right back with you in a mo. See you in a bit. Well, here you go, people. I've actually finished my cup of tea now. Yeah, because it took me a little while to stick this little guy together, and I thought I'd stick him in a chair. I put the poster behind him and this little decal here, but that is a Sentinel pilot. Yes, that's one of the Sentinel phages. Now, I'd imagine once we've actually constructed and built this little chap, that maybe we might give him a bit of a, a polish and a spruce, because at the moment he's covered in rust and looks pretty darn manky. So, hopefully we might see a fully restored version of this, and it looks like some of the casing around his Face is all battered so hopefully we do a bit of a better job than what i've done inside of photoshop in restoring this guy is where i'm going with this people but anyways so there we go that's the actual sentinel phage droid and i must say he looks pretty darn awesome i don't know what sort of functionality level we're going to get with this thing i'm wondering whether it might just be more of a text adventure you know inside of this actual thing but it inside of the expedition it might lead to something bigger and different and more depth in time but i'm thinking it's just probably going to be a text lore adventure this one if it's any think more than that then it's a bonus heck yes i don't want to overhype this and say this guy's going to follow you around and do stuff for you i don't think it's going to be to that level we've already got the sentinel minotaur it'd be a little bit overkill wouldn't it but we can only wait and see i am hoping that maybe they might add in a new sort of sentinel race like this like npcs that we encounter maybe in the realm of glass or something who knows though what the future may hold but at least it's another avenue for the future Okay, right, so jumping over onto the old patch notes, there is a trailer for Apple Mac. Now, if I hit play on this, I'll try, I'll just mute it for a second because it's got all that music in that's probably going to get me striked. But there you go, you get to see some footage of it on a Mac. Now, I have got a couple of bits of footage on Mac that I'll hit up in a moment because there's very different experiences going on out there in the verse, depending on what chipset you're on with the Apple Mac depends on the experience that you're going to be having on initial launch which we'll get into in a bit but yeah the trailer looks pretty darn freaking nice now some of the things that it mentions in here is cross play cross save so we've had a little bit of a confirmation around that it's going to be cross play cross save sort of only on steam accounts so apple to pc pc to apple i believe um we need to see a little bit more but anyway let's scroll on down no man's sky launches on the max everywhere today we've poured a lot of love and effort into making this flagship title with all the content and updates from the past seven years included no Man's Sky has been built from the ground up with new rendering pipeline to take full advantage of the metal Apple Silicon. In addition to the Apple Silicon Mac lineup, it also runs on selected Intel-based Macs. Select Intel-based Macs, which is quite an important piece. Select Intel-based Macs. Because the footage that I'll show you from Scottish Rod, he is on an Intel-based Mac. And um, the actual performance on that isn't as good as on the silicon chip lineups, the M1, M2, M3, whatever. No Man's Sky for Mac is free to millions of players who already own the game on Steam. And for users who use both PC and Mac, cross-save is supported between both systems. So there you go, there's the confirmation on the cross-save right there. Allowing players to jump from PC to Mac and laptop or from, mini, from Mac Mini to Mac Studio. Pretty awesome. We support cross-play on Mac, allowing players to join the millions of existing players on Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, PC, and even VR. Pretty darn freaking awesome, that, isn't it? Cross-play is coming to the Apple Mac, which means for us guys in the Viewerverse, perhaps some more players jumping into the Nexus, running missions, and getting excited seeing the No Man's Sky universe. So that has to be good. Our community is expanding to the Mac. Heck yes. Okay, Express 
Expect fast loading times for the Mac, internal SSD. Consistent performance across all four ranges of Macs is possible through the Metal FX upscaling. Metal-free support allows for No Man's Sky to achieve console-quality graphics whilst maintaining battery life on laptops and lower devices. Lower-end devices, that's, that's pretty sweet, really, to be honest. Last June at Apple's keynote at their Worldwide Developers Conference, we announced that No Man's Sky would be coming to Mac for the first time. We've worked closely with Apple to produce a version that feels at home on Macs. This paves our way for an exciting future on Apple hardware. Sweet. No Man's Sky would be available on Mac with Apple Silicon from the desktop lineup, including Mac Mini, iMac and Mac Studio to Apple's powerful Mac laptops, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and it's also playable on Intel-based Macs with a Core i5 processor, minimum specs and Intel i5-based Macs with 8GB of RAM and Radeon Pro 570X, 4GB of graphics card and 20GB of storage. Well, when you look at Scottish Rod's spec of his laptop, it's like four times better than that, or at least that's how it appears to me. I'm not a Mac savvy person. I'm not a Mac technical specialist. But when you see how much gigabytes of RAM that Scottish Rod's running with, it's like, what? Holy fudge. Okay, the Mac version of No Man's Sky is available through Steam today and is coming to Mac Apple Store shortly. Expect upcoming announcements about the next update soon and future updates to release it's simultaneously on Mac going forwards. So it doesn't sort of say a Mac version like it did with Switch version. So this looks like it's there alongside, you know, all the other platforms and flagship platforms. So brilliant stuff for Mac users. Some great news there for Mac users. Now let's jump on over to my community tab. So this is Scottish Rod's video. Let me just hit this up and I'll just show you a portion of Rod's video. So let's just jump on over into here. It's already muted. Lovely jubbly. Make sure we've got that in um, the highest quality that we can. Bang. And uh, let's just make this a little bit larger on screen. Right, so he goes through some of the settings that he's got set up, but then he restores them back to default. And his his machine is quite powerful, and all, all of this is running quite smooth. It's not until get, it gets into game that you see something a little bit different happening. So here we go. Let's um, just go on in. There you go. I'll unmute Rod for a second. Having problems. Everything is taking absolutely ages to load in. I'm going to let it load in in real time so you can see the problem. Mm -hmm. Taking ages to load in. Look at it. It's stuttering. Reminds me of the dial-up days on the old Tinterwebs, you know, trying to load in a pretty heavy graphical image or something. Like your music, Rod. I think you get the idea. And that, that's not slowed down. And then when I swing the camera around, look at that, it's so bad. That is bad, Rod. Very bad. Very bad indeed. But then, if I go back over to my community tab, I mean, Rod's on an Intel chip. Now, Rod has sounded off inside of the comments to say what he's running with, you know. It works amazingly on the M2 Max and the M1 Max are playable. It's just the Intel chip issues. Now I'm sure they will patch, patch will land in the next few days. I'm quite confident of that as well, to be fair, Rod, but we shall see. I've actually fired that over to the old Hello Games verse. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully um, something might come of it. But yeah, this is the other footage that I've got on here, people, and that's the M1 and M2 chipset. If I hit that one up in the background, here we go. Let's make that a bit bigger. I'll just mute it for a second. But this, this chap over here is actually running it on two platforms alongside each other. I don't know why it does this from time to time, people. Um, let's just hit escape there for a second. Let's see if we can make it bigger now. Go on, go larger. There we are. If I just skip it on a bit, he's actually got two Macs on a desk next to each other. And he's got in the top right-hand corner the actual frame rates. Here we go. So he's put it all on ultra settings, whacked it all the way up to the highest settings that it would possibly go, peeps. And he's got two Apple Macs running next to each other, and he's got it running as smooth as butter. So there we go. And you can see there, it, it, it's running lovely. So it depends on what chipset you've got.
So coming out of there, and if I just uh, get rid of that on screen as well, it, it looks great, doesn't it? That really does look cool. So that's a MacBook Air there, I think. I'm not too sure what the other one is. Like I say, I'm not a Mac specialist. But scrolling up, I put a poll out there. So 30% of people that reply to this poll have already had 67 votes. So there's probably not a lot of people out there running on the Mac hardware. I can only ascertain from this. But 30% are saying that it's a brilliant port. It runs super smooth. Another 30% are saying it's running poorly. Perhaps they're on the Intel chipsets. And then there's 40% that says it's running fine, but it could be better. So perhaps they're running on, I don't know, something that might be a little bit old, but still using the M1 or M2 chipset. I have no idea. But it seems to be that it's very hit and miss at the moment. So if you are on an Intel chipset, you might want to hold off and wait to see what it looks like after a few patches. Scottish Rod is going to be firing his game up and uh, showing it on Apple Mac on an Intel chipset. Uh, every single update that we get, every single patch. So if you have got an Intel Mac, I would suggest subscribing to Rod, hitting that notification bell and watching when it's actually good to jump on in, especially if you don't own it on other platforms and you're thinking about actually paying hard cash. So there we go, peeps. That's pretty much everything I've got for the in the viewerverse. So yeah, finished my tea ages ago, doing that nice little Sentinel droid. I'm probably going to use that as my thumbnail, so dual, dual. Brilliant, lovely, a little bit of hard work. You can use it in multiple places. Might even stick it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, anyway, people in the viewer verse, have a very good day. And I'm pretty excited for this expedition because I honestly think it might bring in some lore. I think it might just be a text adventure. But you know, like on Emergence, they brought in the worm baby nests. Boom, 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 with all the little worm babies coming out. Maybe they might put a little bit more into this. Maybe we might see that little um, MP, we might see it become an NPC like droid. It might do something cool. But I don't want to overhype that. I mean, a lot of the time, expeditions are just text adventures. More often than not, they're text adventures, rather than actually seeing something hard and awesome come into the verse. That said, we have had the Normandy come into the game via an expedition as well, the Worm Babies. So there's a couple of examples where we have seen things actually become into physical iteration. Also, what I would say is the rewards for this expedition, all I'm seeing there really is that jetpack trail, the corrupted jetpack trail. So if that's the early reward, it's it's not on par with a lot of the other expeditions. So perhaps that little droid guy is going to be some sort of thing that we get to keep at the end of all of this, you know? It could be something that we get to keep. So it's on the table. Let us know inside of the actual video description what you think is going to happen with a Sentinel Phage droid. I would like to hope that it becomes something that's worthwhile and meaningful as, as, as a reward. Um, but what would it do? What would it do? Would it just follow you around? Just like the Minotaur? Because the Minotaur does that. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? I don't know whether he's just going to be something that we can put at our base. Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I've just built all those news desks. Imagine if I could have him standing there like a free CPO. <laughs> That'd be cool. As long as he doesn't jibber-jabber on and I can't shut him up, that wouldn't be so cool. A bit like, you know, lay laps. I disable lay laps after about 15 minutes of it going bing, ba, bing, bing, ba, ba, because it sounds like having a fax machine in your freaking room. Anyway, people... <laughs> Have a very good day, and I, I can't wait to hear more from Hello Games because, oh, that's another thing. Sean Murray over on the Twitterverse done quite a tantalising tweet, so before I go, maybe I should hit that up, really, because it, it's kind of interesting because he says that there's something coming very soon, so I'll, I'll just get it up on my screen, and I'll jump on over, and I'll show you that, people, very quickly. Dum, 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 Sean of the Murrays. And I'll jump back over. One second, people. Sorry about this. I completely forgot about this tweet and still started jibber jabbering on. So if I scroll on down here, so we've got all this going on. Yeah, salute Mondo, Mr. Sean. Yes, well done, you. Well done, your team as well, for bringing it over to Mac. Miracle workers. And uh, we're scrolling down. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yep, lovely. Again, okay. he's been tweeting quite a lot. Hello Games Tube has hit a thousand K subscribers. Well done, Hello Games Tube. And uh, we've got it over here. And then Sky launches on the Mac. Yep, yep, yep. VR support as well. It makes me wonder if it might come to VR AR glasses when they come to Apple Mac. So we go, incredibly proud of the pace of the team on No Man's Sky right now. Our latest update for No Man's Sky Interceptor was just a few weeks ago, and Fractal was just six weeks ago before that. Yes, it's been a pretty cool year, I suppose, when you put it that way, Mr. of the Morris. Right, let's just scroll on down here, though. 
it just it says we've got a little something just about to drop and then we got the mac trailer we got the mac patch notes and everything mac related that i've just shown you in this video and then another surprise in the very near future yep the roadmap for the coming year is busy lots to look forward to so I think that I'm, it doesn't say whether they mean just No Man's Sky, but I can only assume unless they are going to be putting out something about their new IP, but there's no hint of that. So I'd like to assume that that is for No Man's Sky, especially since this dropped almost immediately alongside this tweet. So it almost seems like an extension to me. So very much No Man's Sky related is what I would say. So the very near future, I think that's going to be more news around the expedition, which I've just shown you everything that's inside the game files right now, even though there's a lot of images missing. So perhaps there's a more to come as yet. But it's interesting that he put out two emojis, a red and green apple emoji, and then he put this cowboy out of all the red apples. I'm wondering whether we're going to see a cowboy of all the green apples from Mr. Murray, as and when they're ready to tell us what this very near future surprise is. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking, people. That's where my thoughts lie at the moment. So, yeah, let's sound off in the comments again. Let us know what your thoughts and feelings are on all of this. Anyway, now that really is the end of the news. I've got nothing else, I don't think. It's been a busy couple of days, hasn't it, people? Twitter is lit up like a Christmas tree. YouTube's in a frenzy. I love this time. I really do. I do like the speculation on the emojis. But you know how Sean Murray says the roadmap for this year is looking quite busy? I would love it if they actually put out a list of things that they're hoping to do this year. And then we can tie the emojis to the things in that list. It could just be a bullet point list. Apple launch. Expedition 1, Expedition 2, Expedition 3, Expedition 4, you know, don't don't even have to put dates by them. You could just put it in quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4, and then have little bullet notes underneath each of them. That'd be really cool. So we know what sort of season we're in. We know when the emoji drops and we say, oh, OK, then well, that's tied to the Apple Mac. That's what we're getting in the next couple of, in the next update. You know, that that could work quite nicely. Would it take the fun out of this a little? Again, sound up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Anyway, people, I've gone on long enough now. Goodbye, goodbye and goodbye again.